I'm Donna. Today I just want to talk a minute about maximizing the vertical growing space in your garden. Um, for about, I guess, three, maybe four growing seasons now, I have used garden arches um, to trellis uh, so many different things, mainly beans, pole beans, um, but I've also used them for cucumbers and um, peas, like crowder peas, and even tomatoes, you know those hybrid tomato plants that kind of go crazy on you. Well, I've used those to trellis um, these as well. Um, and so I guess it was about probably four years ago at my other garden when I first started using these. And um, it worked great. I love to use them over pathways. Also helps increase the air circulation when I have a wider pathway. Um, I had a square foot garden before, as most of you probably know. And um, what I would do is use the archway between my beds, and I grew from the square foot garden onto the archway. Um, now that's not recommended in the square foot garden book. He has another way to also trellis your vegetables for growing, and it's a very good way, very inexpensive way, he suggests in here. Um, it doesn't get as high as the arches. That's what I like about the arches. They get, um, they're seven and a half feet tall. Um, but he has a way to in here that you can also trellis things like melons and that kind of thing. So refer to your, um, your book for another way for vertical gardening. But um, back to the arch. So I like to use it for various vegetables and then I'm also using it now in my present garden which is an in-ground garden and then I have some raised beds too. So I like to put them over my pathways because um, instead of like over a bed, because when, during the middle of the day when the sun is at its peak around noon, you know, that uh, sun can come down and it will shade the plants underneath your archway if you are um, putting it over your bed. So that's one of the reasons I like to put it over my walkway and it also makes it really easy to harvest pole beans or anything, really. I'm going to put another one in my garden because I found some beans that I absolutely want to grow this year. I want to grow a lot of them and they're called the greasy bean. And I grew them last year for the first time, absolutely fell in love with the flavor. So um, I'll include a link to you on that bean in case it's something you want to grow. It's um, pretty much a, a mountain, what they call it, a mountain bean. I live in the Appalachian Mountains, so it's a common bean around here, but it's hard to find. I mean, you're not going to go to the grocery store and buy it. And those are the things I tend to like to grow, the things I can't just go out to the market and buy. So I'm going to grow those this year. That's why I'm installing another arch. So I... I purchased these at a little store called Old Time Pottery, and that's those are very common stores in the southeast United States. Um, you can find these online, and I really did a good bit of research to try to find one before I did this uh, video, so in case someone else out there wanted to uh, use the arch too, then they would have um, a place to get it. So I think I found one that's the same one that I use, so I'll include a link in the description area if you want to get it. Now I'll say it's cheap because when I buy them at the store they're around $15 at Old Time Pottery, but if you order it online, I think with shipping and everything it's going to run you around $25 to $30. Um, but when I say cheap, it's because of the quality. It's not like a, a nice wrought iron arch, obviously. It's just something that serves the purpose of what I need it to do, and I think it adds a lot of a height to the garden. I think that makes the garden look real pretty too when, when um, all the beans are trellised on and that kind of thing. So I'll include also um, a link to where you can take a look at some of the past videos where I've used the arches and you can kind of get an idea if it's something that you think would look attractive in your garden too. Okay, So this is a flimsy and it's not high quality, but I can go ahead and tell you that I have been using these. I guess it's I bought them 20, in 2010 and that I moved here and so I've used them in 11, 12, 13, and I'm going to use them again this year. So that's almost five years. They're starting to rust, you know, a little bit. That's to be expected. And um, I actually, like I said, moved them <laughs> on the moving truck. I broke them down and brought them with me. And they still held up fine. Okay, so now um, what these are, is they're, they're a hollow pole. Okay, that's what, one of the things that makes them so cheap. And then they're also powder coated so that means that when you put it together you're going to get like green uh, paint on your hands so make sure that you wear some uh, tight fitting gloves that you can easily work with because you're going to have to put the, assemble this whole thing if you decide to get it and you've got to line up the little holes for the screws so you need some just some gloves like uh, not garden gloves it would be too hard to work with but also what you're going to need is some kind of um, 
oil or lubricant to put the uh, poles together to line up the holes for the bolts. And I use a graphite oil because it's very fine and so it works great for me. You might be able to find something else that you can use. But I highly recommend that you uh, use those two things when assembling them. Now, um, when I use these in Florida, I had to sandy, sandy soil. And it uh, held up, it held these fine. All I had to do was stick the poles down in the sand, put a little water around them, and all compacted down around the poles. And they were very sturdy. I had no problem with them. Um, and then when I moved here, I was going to put these in the soil, and my soil is very clay, very thick, and it has rocks down in there and everything. So I, I knew that if I tried to force the, the poles down into the, my native soil, that they would bend most likely, and I would not have a sturdy arch. So what I thought to do was to get some concrete rebar. I think that's what you call this. <laughs> I got it at Home Depot. And you can get the concrete section and get you one of these. And uh, I, I put this down into the ground halfway. And that's pretty hard to do because if I hit a rock or something, then I've got to realign the entire archway. You know, and so it's kind of hard to put these in. That's the hardest part really about putting the arch up for me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these parts out. I'm going to put a couple together uh, to show you how they line up. And my plan is to put together half, two halves, okay, and then that'll make it easier for me to take it down to the garden tomorrow, which is supposed to be a pretty day, and I'm going to work on getting it installed. Uh, it just make it easier to not assemble the entire thing together, obviously, and try to drag it all the way out to the garden. So I'll assemble it in two halves, which will make it much more easy to get down there. And then after it's up, I'll show you what I do to help out the beans while they grow up uh, around the arch. I just take some like jute string or something and I crisscross it all the way around the arch and it just gives more uh, area for the beans to grab on. Okay, so anyway, um, I'll go ahead and show you this and hopefully it's something that you'll be able to try to. Or two. So let's take a peek in here and I'll show you the different pieces. Oh, this one's white. <laughs> so apparently these can come in green or white. <laughs> this one is white and the rest of mine are green. So I guess I'm going to have a big white arch out there this year. <laughs> now hopefully I have all my bolts and stuff too in here somewhere. You know how these things are. Like I said, they're inexpensive. They're made in China and you just never know if you're going to have all the pieces you need or not. So so obviously the first thing you're going to want to do is check and make sure you have all your pieces. I'm not going to count my pieces right now because I've got to go somewhere in just a minute. So I'm just going to show you real quick how I'm going to put the pieces together. And that way you will know what I'm talking about as far as lining up the holes. Alright, so you force them together like this. But you see how hard, it's kind of hard it can be. Now this one went together easily. But most of them are not this easy. But what I would do, if, if I had a hard time putting this together like that, I would dab it with just a little bit of oil. Okay. This is another reason why you want to wear gloves, because you're going to get some of this oil on you. Okay. You'll see how it comes together. So the supporting bar fits right in here like this. And then I'm going to build another pole right here. And this forms the track of the arch. So your screws will just go in here like this. Okay. It's real easy to assemble. It just takes a little bit of time. Alright, so I'll show you a real close-up picture of the instructions here. So I'm just going to do the whole thing like this. The little bars in the middle and all the way around. Okay, well I finished putting it together. It probably took about 45 minutes total. And you'll see what I mean when I said I put it partially together. It's not connected right here. This way it will enable me to take it down very easily to the garden. I went ahead and um, put that piece uh, in the arch so I wouldn't lose the screws or that piece, mainly the screws. I don't have to keep up with them. So when I get out to the garden, I will um, put these together. 
And I'll take that little rod out and I'll go ahead and put that. Um, I'll assemble that part there. I only really needed the lubrication on one screw. It was very, very hard to get in. I think it was this screw here. So most of them all went in very easily. So I'm looking forward to putting this in the garden in the morning. It is a beautiful day. I'm so glad the sun is finally out. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, archway in. And so I walked through the garden to try to figure out where it should go. I think it will look attractive here, but I know the soil is not going to be good here because there's weed block down here and the soil is going to be very compacted. So the first thing I need to do when I install this, so I'm going to go ahead and do that final piece of assembly there at the top. And then I'll come over here and I will mark my positions for where I need to put the rebar with the arch. I'll mark, mark my little places and then I'll hammer in the rebar. Hopefully there are no rocks under here and I can hammer in the rebar. That's always the problem. And I'll try to amend the soil there so that I can plant my beans there this summer. Alright, so I've got some work to do. Oh, and one more thing too I wanted to show you. How I string up the arches. Here's an example here. I just take some jute string and work it all the way up. That usually lasts about two years. And if you really wanted to keep your arches in really good condition, you would take them down every winter and store them away. And that's much more work than I want to do. So <laughs> I just leave them out here exposed to all the uh, weather. So they have a very weathered look, but they serve the purpose. And I put these little um, solar lights at the top of them too. So at night it kind of lights up the garden. It looks pretty. Okay, so I'll cut out the weed block, and now I am going to mark off my s spot. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you here. I am going to make holes with this, so it's going kind to of, be kind of like my little drill for the ground. So far, no rocks. Okay. And one more. Rock. <laughs> it always happens on the last one. <laughs> All right, let me see. Maybe not. Maybe it's hard, hard clay. It's going in now. Good. Okay. Near the rock. I must have went through it. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Okay, now it's time to put it in the ground. Now I want to go through and just tighten up all my screws and make sure everything's secure. Okay, so there it is. And I just need to put some string on it. And I think I'm actually going to use it for sugar snap peas for the springtime. And then by the time those die off, I'll start to grow my um, pole beans on it. Oh, that might work out. I've never tried it before. Okay, so I'll just walk through here and show you these arches. These are the old ones. Right, here's one that's bent right here at the bottom. Looks like it might even rush through. Um, I could replace that if I need to, but I think it's going to be fine. I mean, it just needs to hold up, you know, the beans and stuff. So, here are the other ones. And you can see the screws are kind of rusting and that kind of thing, but I mean they are four years old, so 
They're doing great, I think. This will be the fifth year I'm using them. Okay, one more thing. I was just cleaning up the garden. I'm trying to get all the debris and uh, things cleaned up out of it. And I was checking out this arch here. And I want to show you on here. Um, it has rusted through down here on the bottom. So, again, I do want to stress that these are, uh, this will be the fifth year I've used them. And I do not bring them in in the winter time. So, this might be something that you'll want to consider when making your decision whether or not these are something that you want okay um, what I did when I bought all of these um, let's see I bought one two three four five I bought five at one time and then I bought one extra bar box for parts in case I was missing any because I don't live near an old-time pottery so if, it, if you're thinking you might want to um, do a lot of these I would suggest getting an extra box just for parts so you don't have to go and order new parts if you're missing one of the um, pieces. I had uh, a couple of the boxes were missing pieces. So I just wanted to make, uh, make a point on that. Alrighty.